Good afternoon or evening, everybody. This is John Seville from Acorn Wealth. This is your executive summary for stock setups for Tuesday, the eleventh uh, of uh, excuse me, the tenth of uh, November. And um, so, very interesting market today. We um, obviously have uh, we rolled over. We talked about waiting for the confirmed break that for the open range to be confirmed. We needed it to break higher than the uh, the close on uh, Tuesday, November third. Um, we've uh, trailed lower, and today we had a big candle down. In fact, now closing below open range for November. So we are um, uh, we uh, talked about this idea of the that these uh, momentum uh, moves uh, building um, taking a while to kind of roll over and, and basically consolidating sideways. So we may be seeing a confirmation of that. Again, it's too early to tell. We still need a break a few more points below today's close, um, but uh, certainly looks promising so for so far for the um, uh, for the uh, short term. Uh, now, um, that's that's the key thing to watch tomorrow is uh, where this goes. Now, we'll have a look at the Dow Jones Global Index. <laughs> And you can see that that has basically uh, been continuing down and has broken down under all moving averages. The classic type of formation here of expanding range candles to the downside. So um, the, the, the markets overseas seem to be leading a, uh, a, a momentum, a beginning of a momentum down move. So um, we could be seeing that bear market we've been waiting for, um, for the, or the next leg of it that we've been waiting for. Now, um, in terms of some of the uh, uh, stocks we've been following, uh, MGA, um, that's uh, one we mentioned last week, but that's one that I still hold uh, puts in. Uh, obviously, that was one of our big one earnings plays, and uh, it uh, it plummeted. It was down 10.42% uh, yesterday, uh, even lower intraday. Uh, had a dead cat bounce and is now continuing lower, so that's looking awesome. Uh, options uh, had a significant jump over the last few days, obviously, uh, so that that one was noteworthy. CSTM, very noteworthy. Uh, even bigger performance there. That was the one we mentioned for um, uh, 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 buying a call option on CSTM. And uh, they announced rally 26% on Thursday, another 25% Friday, uh, easily hitting our, ta our first target, which is 100 and created 115% uh, intraday profit. If you're still holding that, you'd be up um, uh, in pro pro probably close to the 1,000% mark, I'd imagine now. Um, uh, but uh, that's uh, probably looking at a, a, a take profit point at this stage, if you haven't gotten out already. Um, let's have a look at what else. Uh, NSR, uh, another one of our, um, uh, our big one shorts. That plummeted yesterday. It was down 14.21%. Um, uh, retested resistance from beneath, and uh, that one looks like it wants to go lower now as well. So I would uh, actually continue to hold that one if you're in it still. Uh, I, I sold my options out already, but um, um, but that looks like it's now technically under that downward channel and uh, could get down to that $21 range. Um, okay, so uh, let's push forward here. We've got LGF. Lionsgate Financial uh, Entertainment. Sorry, um, this was one of our earnings plays. We alerted people to uh, last week. We'd uh, highlighted. Uh, we mentioned on November fifth that uh, we'd uh, play the thirty-nine dollar um, uh, puts, which were at um, uh, I think they were around about a around a dollar or so. But um, the, this is a reported aftermarket today and uh, is down 6.61%. So uh, down around to that $35, $36 range. Um, we could um, we could easily get um, uh, another big drop uh, coming in tomorrow. So this one should be a big profit. If you're in short-term options, I'd certainly be happy to at least take the original capital out so that you're just playing with house money. But that one looks like it's going to play out really, really well tomorrow, especially with the market conditions looking the way they are. Uh, AVGO, one that, that I uh, still hold puts in. Uh, this has got some good divergence. These are the semiconductor producers for Apple. Um, you can see um, a divergent money flow as we've come up here to create a double top. So um, this one's looking good on the downside, still holding that. ADPT still holding this one got puts in this um, this one is uh, still is now holding beneath its neckline uh, holding beneath the moving averages so uh, ADPT looking good 
Um, CCJ, Cameco, uh, of course, also a short we picked up last week, despite the bull market. Now, this has also dropped. This was highlighted as an entry below 1350. Uh, this is uh, this is also dropping. Uh, so all these, um, uh, even though we've had the bull market, these puts uh, or shorts all performing really, really well. So it just shows you don't need to be going with the market direction uh, when you when you're seeing performance from the stocks moving in their uh, their own their own direction. Uh, and then when the market starts to turn to catch up with the fundamental reality of the weakness of this market, you start to see really enhanced movements and big time drops. So CCJ, loving this one. Uh, GIL, Hull puts in this one as well. Um, this one is just uh, kind of holding there. Uh, just started to turn over in the last few days with an expanding range. Went from uh, 343,000 yesterday to 465,000 shares today. So this could be the start of its uh, kind of uh, its big drop also. Um, now, um, let's push forward here. On the long side, and I'll, I'll give you my new ones at the end, but uh, on the long side, uh, obviously we've had, uh, we've had some very uh, excitement performance there. So just goes to show you can make money in both directions if you're playing the independent stocks rather than trying to play the market. Uh, CYTR was uh, was uh, an entry criteria at two dollars eighty. Um, it uh, the target was three dollars thirteen. It went right into that and hit that today. Um, so uh, I would certainly want to uh, update your stop loss, um, update the stop loss to protect uh, that um, that profit margin. The uh, you can see that the support now is going to be coming in right around here. Uh, which was the uh, around about 287 would lock in a minimum of seven seven cents profit after taking some profit say at the first target. So um, uh, the first target's already been hit, which gives us about a 10 percent gives a 10 percent performance since entry criteria, um, and uh, we're going to run into some resistance pretty close here. So. Um, uh, uh, I'd be more like I'd be more um, happy with just uh, clinching uh, at least half of that, and then updating the stop loss criteria to um, to the uh, 287 mark. Okay, um, we've also got NTRA, which I bought options call options in. Um, those that's holding steady, just kind of sitting on top of its moving averages. Um, obviously, I'm not going through every stock in the newsletter, but uh, I'm just kind of skimming over some of the, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> the longs here. AAVL uh, holding strong today despite the market drop, uh, so that's still looking good. Also, hold call options in that. Uh, some of the more recent stock plays, though, which are worth noting. These are from um, from the executive summary on uh, where were we on Thursday. And uh, excuse me, on on Wednesday night, uh, looking for plays for Thursday, and uh, we talked about ATEN as a possible flag from an for an entry from 7.55 up to um, nine dollars oh seven. Obviously, had a great rally so far, up 1.58 percent there on Friday, up another five percent almost here today. So um, that's uh, that's looking good. I I would maybe re reduce the uh, the exit criteria though, however, based on the market conditions, and so um, I. I'd look at basically a Fibonacci extension here if we go from the bottom of this candle to the top of this one you can see we're going to get kind of a uh, uh, an idea of where those Fibonacci start to come into play uh, I'd look at actually taking some profit here around uh, 853 as a first profit target but uh, the other target still stands there at uh, at 907 okay so moving forward, um, let's have a look now at uh, BIOS, the uh, the other flag. This one holding strong so far. Um, hasn't quite had the pop yet of the other ones. We've got a slight kind of contracting range here, so we'll just have to see. Entry criteria was 266. Um, the exit criteria is 340. So we'll uh, again, it's going to be a wait and see, see if we can bust through this moving average resistance. Um, but the stop criteria was 244. So I mean, it's a bit of a waiting game. Um, uh, I would update that to uh, to 253. So just reduces that risk right down. Uh, 
Okay. Um, and ZFGN. Whoops. That's just being squeezed right now between those moving averages. So this is going to go big or go home probably tomorrow or the next day. Um, entry criteria was 1160. Target is 1823. And um, so that's, a, that's a, we're looking for some big potential movement there. Um, and uh, they've got earnings coming up. So we uh, discussed obviously that with, with all these types of plays, you know, the possible options may be the way to go. Now, these guys have a, um, a class action lawsuit filed against them. It's one of these massive drops now from, what, uh, uh, $45 down to $10. Um, so um, there's, uh, this is a highly speculative but potentially highly lucrative type of play when these things get uh, possibly overruled. So... <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. So this is a um, this is one of those kind of r really kind of pop it in your pocket and see what happened types of plays uh, if that wants to pan out. Now um, I have uh, two possible new shorts for you. Um, first one is an AIR. Uh, now this is a uh, looking at the, kind of the longer term outlook. It kind of looks like a, a possible head and shoulders here that you can see on the bigger, larger time frame. So I'd be looking at this as an entry criteria of 22.63 down to 19.13. And yes, I'd be quite happy to play options on this uh, if if available. But I think you'll find the volume's a little bit small. But uh, anyway, worth looking into. But from 22.63 down to 19.13, I'd look at a stop criteria at 23.63. So we're looking for a break down through 22.63. Uh, and if that were to trigger, then looking at a stop at 23.63. Uh, the risk reward there is pretty good. It's it's um, three dollars fifty reward for a dollar of risk, so that's a three and a half to one. So that's the first one. Um, no real notable insider seller or anything like that, but they do report on the seventeenth of December, as reported uh, through uh, Yahoo Finance and Finviz. Then we have Western Digital. Now they've got they, they're going through a merger with Sandisk and so forth. So there's a bit of fundamentals going on behind the scenes, but could be a very interesting short-term play on the stock side. You can see hasn't experienced any lift from the market recently. It was originally an entry criteria we were looking up around seventy-seven dollars, but never hit it um, after we'd published the alert. So it's just kind of been uh, floating down and going into this kind of severe momentum mode. Um, uh, look, I think a break of sixty-six forty-three could easily get this down to sixty forty-three which would be a 10% drop or a $6 drop. Um, and then I'd be looking at a stop loss criteria uh, just at there at, uh, at $70.13. So we're looking basically about um, three fifty dollars risk for a $6 reward. So it's a little bit uh, higher than we'd normally take on. But that would just be the, what I put in on the outset um, uh, to uh, protect against whipsawing on the entry day. Then I would lower it immediately down towards this uh, kind of 68 70 level. So um, that's what I would be looking at on uh, WDC. Now on the long side, highly speculative play. Um, they announced on the 11th of November as reported um, online. Um, you can see significant money flow divergence and uh, you know, just having a look at the long-term charts come a long way down. So um, you know we've, we've got uh, there's some potential here. But uh, this could be just a very, very short potential play from, say, around this two, uh, 250, 260 area. Uh, and like a, a quick pop right up into this area here at 323. So um, that's about um, that's about sixty cents on two dollar sixty stock. So um, that could be uh, that that could be a, a, a very interesting move, um, and uh, obviously giving ample profit opportunity. Of at least around 20 20 percent or so so I'm um, just having a quick look at the options here on this one again to protect against um, uh, you know unknown announcements because you're looking at an option uh, an earnings play so we avoid try to avoid holding stocks into earnings um, just having a look here that the November two dollar fifty calls are currently 15 cents uh, was the last transaction price so um, uh, that's obviously very, very interesting because if you get a pop uh, up to uh, $3.30 or something like that, then uh, there's, some, there's some substantial money to be made.
So um, that's what I'd be looking at. I'd be looking at the November uh, $2.50 calls for the highly speculative stuff. Um, and then if you want to get, and if looking a little bit further out, uh, if you look at the, um, uh, yeah, there's not a lot of option chain in May. You'd have to go to February, uh, and you're looking at basically uh, $2.50 calls are 65 cents. Okay, so that would be the, the speculative long to offset against the shorts that we've just discussed. Of course, we've, we've got quite a lot of shorts so um, uh, that we're holding, a whole portfolio full of puts, actually. So um, any downward movement is going to be very exciting, but that doesn't mean you still can't capture profits like ATEN and a bunch of other ones that uh, are CSTM uh, that are going to do really, hopefully do really, really well. Oh, and speaking of longs that should do really, really well, um, OPK. I mentioned this last week. This is on the director was buying a million a month kind of thing of the insider stuff. Um, this uh, this uh, was down today 0.1%, but but beat earnings significantly today um, on um, uh, uh, on their announcement after market. Uh, so I, I bought a bunch of this. I, I, I put a little bit more into this one than I normally would, and I think I mentioned that in the executive summary. So uh, I'm hoping this performs as well as it looks like it's going to. It's currently at 10.47 after market, which is an increase of 5.23%. Um, but uh, their earnings beat a fair by a fair bit. Um, they were expected to um, um, they were expected to miss by one cent a share on earnings per share. Um, they actually came out with 25%, 25 cents a share profit. So 0.26, uh, $0.26 dollars better than the capital IQ consensus. Uh, revenues rose 622% year over year. Uh, to 140 million versus um, uh, what was expected, which was 133.04 million. Um, so um, they have uh, they've completed enrollment in ongoing phase three trials in a, gro a growth home uh, deficiency uh, product. Their um, uh, they got ca their cash or ca cash equivalents and marketable securities were 212 million, um, and uh, uh, and they're going through. Um, a uh, FDA approval process for a new treatment um, uh, with uh, for uh, stage three or four chronic kidney disease and secondary uh, um, um, can't pronounce that word but anyway um, that's it. so there's a lot of really good stuff as I mentioned you look into the insiders on this one uh, you can see that they've got a great track record of um, of uh, companies they've traded with in the past so of course you can go back to our executive summary last week and uh, check that one out but that's basically uh, what we have got for you today now um, make sure you stay safe and uh, enjoy a oh, very, what should be very, a couple good days in happy trading. And we'll see you in, exec in the uh, trading room and executive summary tomorrow. Take care. Good night.